27, 28 minutes. That's that's how long this song is, John. Well, you know, I, I think that's awesome. Uh, don't you? It's I, rushed. And we get to listen to a lot of it in one sitting. That's awesome. <laughs> that's very true. Woo. All right. I'm geared up for this. We've started this very early in the morning for me. Um, so uh, anything you want to say? Or are we getting right into it? Well, we, we, we met our goal, Dave. We hit over 2,000 uh, subscribers on, on the channel. And let me just take a look to see exactly where it's at right now, just so, uh, you know, the details are correct at the time of the recording. Um, we're doing this. We're going to release this uh, Friday. So okay. today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Uh, so looking at the dashboard right now, we have 2021. Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. 21, 2021. Kind of a, yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of fun, actually. <laughs> So uh, we have crossed the threshold by 21. We're into 2,000 uh, plus subscribers. Thank you so much. And uh, the reward is as much for you, our <laughs> subscribers, as it is for me and especially Dave, who is going to be listening to this song for the very first time in his life. And it is a doozy. It's actually two different songs on two different albums with one storyline. So, Dave? All right, 28 minutes and 28 seconds. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, props to go. Ian GMK for, uh, for putting this together into one video so we didn't have to pause. Oh, yeah. I got to turn my headphones up. Prepare yourself, Dave. definite sci-fi movie opening vibes well it's a story i mean Sounds ZZ Top like.
like to refer back to the song about the people talking about all the keyboards and the keyboard stuff. Playing the keyboard there. Yeah, that was a long note keyboard. Telescopic eye, infinity, the star that would not die. Or like the eagle. such a good job so far of making you feel the journey with the music yeah
Man, that subtle heartbeat in the background is fascinating too. Drum feel mimicking the heartbeat is such a good touch.
in an unborn I have passed into a nervous As was told tales of old To the city of the mortals Marble white and pure as gold
That was fun. <laughs> That's literature. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> man. I you know I don't know what I expected here, but this certainly did not uh, disappoint. I'll say that. All right, I'm <laughs> like the beginning, which was a half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right, all right. <laughs> I think that. We started this song, and uh, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this song is uh, about uh, sort of circular time uh, it, to a point. Because we have our protagonist who ends up becoming the disembodied uh, sort of godlike creature of Cygnus who is on a spaceship and travels to a black hole, goes through a black hole. And I got to say, musically... I think it was really neat because we had like this excitement, uh, this like, oh, what's out there? There's a black hole out there. Well, what happens when you go through a black hole? Like, I don't really know. Well, let's go take our spaceship and go through it. And then there was a moment where I almost felt like the we were getting a little slow and repetitive. Like there was a long period where you just had a very light guitar playing and it, it went on for close to a minute and a half, I want to say. And I almost started being a little, I want to say annoyed, but like, come on, guys, you know, like, let's go somewhere with the song. And then suddenly it hit me. We're traveling through space. Space is big. And quiet. And quiet. <laughs> and we're on the journey. We're on the journey to the black hole. And, and that's why I feel like this, because I'm restless. Because I want to get there. I want the journey to be over. But at the same time, this journey, you just have to go on it. Mm -hmm. So then we get to the black hole. And we have this you know, incredible uh, time period of, of heavy music in there. And you feel the excitement. You feel the excitement of the unknown. Because we're going to go through this sucker and uh, realistically probably die. But the truth is we don't know what happens if you go through there. Weird stuff with time, that's for sure. But either way, you get there. You go through it, and then we had this long interlude where I felt like they did such a good job of swelling the music to make you feel excitement at a mystery, excitement at the unknown. Yeah. And I felt that through the music, which speaks once again how, to just how masterfully the guys from Rush pull that off to give you the feeling they want you to feel with nothing more than multiple minutes of music by painting, yes, a word picture to, to start your imagination. But then you, you sit in that imagination and you take the musical journey that that word picture started you on. So then we go through the black hole and apparently we go back in time, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we, we get to Greek gods. Greek gods are all real in whatever alternate universe this is. Uh, <laughs> this you know thing that the black hole sent us to, uh, Greek gods are there. And we start with wisdom the Greek god of wisdom. I assume she's sitting there, an owl uh, with her, starts talking about, you know, uh, hey, maybe we should plan, maybe we should prepare, we should build some cities with some uh, storehouses, some grain houses, prepare for winter, maybe some walls, protect us from the wolves. But then Dionysus shows up and says, or we could just go out in the woods. <laughs> we go out in the woods and get drunk. Just, uh, just throwing it out there. <laughs> and, and the truth is it is more fun to maybe go out in the woods and get drunk with your friends <laughs> than it is to work hard to build walls and build a city and maintain an infrastructure and plan for the future and store up grain for your future. You know, Dionysus has a point. Seems more fun right now. Mm. Right? Sure. <laughs> so we have much of our population that goes, hey, that guy's got a point. I think drunk with my buddies in the forest sounds way more fun. They go out there. And once again, we feel the music. I feel that we transition from order, from wisdom to not chaos, because that's not right, but to fun, to whimsy, uh, to just let's enjoy ourselves. And even some of the ear candy with even the, the way the lyrics were said, like there was a filter put on the microphone that made it sound almost a little whimsical, a little more just boisterous and fun. Mm. So then as we go through the boisterous and fun section, unfortunately, that... <laughs> The reality of winter comes. <laughs> comes to a bitter end, a cold, bitter, and literal biting as the wolves show up end. Right. So we go through that whole ordeal, uh, and that ordeal leads us to a point where 
what do we do now? You know, like you're kind of lost. You're, you're dying and we need a leader. We need someone to get us back on track. Mm. Um, and I think that's where uh, we start seeing like, oh man, our, like, yeah, your music is fun and your, your whatever, your laughter, your wine, certainly great. But like our cities are abandoned now. <laughs> They're overgrown. All of our hard work is falling apart. Right. Because unfortunately that, you know, everything degrades. And so now there's only one thing left to do, and that's be pretty upset that we let ourselves get to this point. And so there's only one thing to do. Let's fight about it. Right. <laughs> so now the I war is I told you begin. we shouldn't be in the woods for so long. <laughs> well, I, I told said, you not to bring that keg. Yeah, but it's so much more fun with this keg. And, <laughs> and so now we start fighting. And so now the universe is divided. And we have the heart and the mind collide because the truth is Dionysus and Apollo are, are two sides of a, of a valuable coin. You don't want to just be a boring sitting planner. You also want to have some fun. You also want to enjoy your life. You want to have some love in your life. You want to have some wine in your wife. In your wife. Well, yeah. well maybe. That's where I like my wine. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I want some wine in my wife. Uh, so, like, you get to a level where now we have two sides warring that should be coexisting. And I think that's what a lot of the, the rest of the song is about. Um, I would even argue most of the rest of the song is about that, uh, that we have things that should be not just coexisting, but complementary coexisting mm -hmm. that now are causing people to fight, that are causing people to say, my way is better. And I'm going to follow the dude who says my way is better. No, my way is better. I'm going to follow the dude that says my way is better. And the problem is they're both, Right? Because both sides should coexist together. They're, yeah, they're both valuable parts of yeah. society, humanity. And so to argue over which one is better is stupid. We need them both as society. I want to live indoors, protected and fed and warm, but also I want to stream my Star Trek and enjoy my life. <laughs> like we need a we need accountants, we need engineers. Yeah. But we need actors and we and need musicians and, and brewers. Oh, especially brewers. We definitely yeah. need brewers. <laughs> and so I think that is that is a lot of the rest of the song. But even as we go there, we have swells of the music that make you feel like the battle is happening all of a sudden. And then we have the calm after the battle. And, and then finally at the end, we have the bringer of balance. But I think the, the bringer of balance in a way what he does is very interesting to me because he doesn't he doesn't bring balance by like showing up and conquering it's not right. that he says i'm here and i'm in charge he shows up and he brings stories he brings ancient wisdom uh i think it says what is it? a memory and awareness he brings the things that were forgotten during the time when everyone started fighting. And I think it very easily gets to a point where you say, what are what were we even fighting about? Like, at this point, we're just fighting. Uh, we have generations of people that have been fighting. Well, why do I hate those guys? Well, because my dad hated those guys, and he told me to hate those guys. And so, like, you have generational fighting. And mm -hmm. we get to the end where we we calm down and we listen to the stories. And I think that has such value. And I think that's uh, to a point what the song is about. Like it, it took a fantastical idea of, of a dude on a ship that went through a wormhole and was somehow shot back in time to where Greek gods are real and he's there. It took that concept and it told you a story. And the story was actually about getting along about uniting your heart and your mind, your your artist, your love, and your let's be practical, let's build bridges, and let's build infrastructure. And I think that completes the perfect sphere because you have to have both of the empty hemispheres stuck together, which could also be a hollow earth theory, maybe Russia's hollow earthers. <laughs> which is a fun <laughs> conspiracy theory. If you've never read about the hollow earth, fun conspiracy theory. I don't believe it, but it is fun. Uh, but well, Rick that, Wakeman made an album about journey to the center of the earth. So it, <laughs> I mean, it's a fun book. <laughs> I get it. It's a fun book. Uh, but I, that is what I get from the lyrics 
but I, I think more importantly, that's what I get from the music. Mm. And, and I think once again, this journey was so impactful and so enjoyable because of the music. And you had you had 28 minutes plus, almost 29 minutes of a song. And the lyrics, I would have to actually look at it, but I would guesstimate less than a third. Probably, easily. Pro- pro- what, a fourth maybe? Yeah, of that maybe song had actual lyrics? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you're talking, you know, seven-ish minutes of a, of a 29-minute song that had lyrics actively being spoken. And yet the entire song, I was engaged, I was interested, and I felt like the story was progressing, even when it was mostly lyricless when it comes to That's an to interesting point you just bring up there, that, that the music and the lyrics progress. That's one of the problems I have with pop music is from the opening line, the story's over. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, whereas this, the entire time, this story progressed when no one was speaking. And so it never did get old. It, it didn't get boring. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did have have loop arounds. I, I, someone, I think, one time said the technical term for it. Um, but you had callbacks to previous uh, sections of music from earlier mm-hmm. in the song uh, as as we were flying again, for instance. Uh, we went back to that flying section. Loved in the middle. I loved, or not in the middle, um, semi near the beginning. I'm iffy on time frames because I just listened to a half an hour song for the first time. So right. I'm iffy on time frames. But somewhere in there, when it was shortly after we entered the black hole and we had this calm. And I, <laughs> you couldn't see it because my hands are well below the screen. Uh, right. But I thought for a second that I could hear my pulse. And I started taking my pulse with my fingers and then realized it didn't line up and it was in the song. <laughs> Right, the heartbeat, and that's why I picked out the heartbeat, uh, and then mirroring the heartbeat with the drum beat uh, just a little bit later in the song was such a neat extra addition. And there were a lot of little things like that that happened in this song, where you would have a little piece of ear candy, and then later the music would mirror not just things that happened earlier, but like ear candy that happened earlier was mirrored by specific instruments. Um, right. So that, there was a lot to unpack here. I, I guarantee I probably missed a ton of it. Um, but but that's my feelings on it right now. I think, uh, you know what? I'm actually pretty happy with my wrap-up. I, 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 I think it's myself. great. Dave, as you know, and as I've said ad nauseum, I pay very little attention to lyrics. And I'm certain I've read those lyrics before, mm-hmm. but I would say probably maybe only once. And that was 40 years ago. So... I had no memory of the lyrics, although I could sing some of the hooks that are in there, mm. some of the phrases. Mostly, I just dig the music. That's that's my thing. I'm a music lover. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest lyric lover. I'm the music lover. So you help me make understanding of that that I never put together. I do want to remind you that that was two different songs appearing on two different albums put together. Was it? Well, I mean, they named them Cygnus X 1 and 2, right? So, like, clearly right. the band did this on purpose. It's not like there's their unconnected <laughs> songs that fans stuck right. together. Yeah, uh, yeah. And- Cygnus X 1, Book 1, The Voyage, that included Prologue mm-hmm. and then 1, 2, and 3. That came on um, uh, Farewell to Kings. It was the final track. Okay. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, definitely about 10 minutes and uh, 25 seconds. So that means the second one is 18, almost 19 minutes ish? Exactly. So, yeah, let me go there and take a look at the exact time on that one. So that was the fourth track. That would have probably been side one. And it's 12 minutes and 32 seconds. Um, Then they they must have thrown something else in there. Cygnus Hmm. X1, book two, Hemispheres, the Sphere, a kind of dream. Um, Yeah, for it to be 28 combined, something else got in there. Uh, and I'm just not familiar enough with the, you know, like I don't separate when I listen to a rush album, they may as well not even tell me what the songs are, you know, mm. cause I just listen to it beginning to end. And I don't pay that, you know, that deep level of attention. Mm. And a lot of our subscribers are big time rush heads, rush fans, and they eat, breathe, sleep, the stuff. They know the lyrics, they know the intended meanings behind the songs, uh, I'm not that guy. I love Rush music. I've never seen uh, uh, any other band more often than I've seen Rush. Even mm. my favorite band, yes. 
I haven't seen as often as I've seen Rush. But of course, as I've said before, Rush toured a whole heck of a lot more than Yes did. Yeah, yeah. Which I assume would be quite helpful. Yeah, so uh, I love the music. There isn't a Rush song from their first album all the way through, at least through Signals. There isn't a single Rush song I don't like. And in fact, it's hard to find a few you know that I don't that I don't love. I love most of their music up to that point. Mm. Um, but uh, but as far as the lyrics and you know how things connect up, and did I even really realize that Cygnus X One and Cygnus X Two matched or they, that they belonged to be one story on two different i may not have even realized that until mm. just a few years ago you know so that's how that's how my surface level of lyrics <laughs> and meaning you know shows its ugly head and then that's why you're here to help me and uh and for me to help you enjoy this amazing music yeah i gotta say this is one of the coolest songs i guess uh, multiple that i've ever heard uh, especially back to back the planning i mean it takes to to pull that off is impressive to me it really is i'm blown away by it i i have another question i don't know if you know the answer to this does does rush do their own art or do they just have like someone else does cover art for their albums? Is that like a separate thing or is it like queen, you know, where they have a graphic artist and so they did all their own, own art. I mostly ask because of this. It's because of uh-huh. this butthole, butthole on the front of the album. Oh, she got it. <laughs> <laughs> really why I'm asking. I want to know who's, naked man? yeah. Whose decision was full bare booty. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not against it, John. We talked I've... about that guy because we, we know that guy's name. We talked about oh, that in one right. of the other Rush videos. That's right. We uh, did. So clearly they used a photographer. They used graphic artist people to make their uh, their visions come to life. Mm, this almost looks a little Monty Python-like, but I do like it. Uh, the two brains talking to each other. You have the businessman, and then you have, I assume, the artist because he also poses, poses like he's dancing, but... You know what's a coincidence? What year did that come out with the uh, with the naked man? No idea. <laughs> no <laughs> idea at all. Anyway, because because yes, also has a naked man with a buttocks on the front of going to the one. <laughs> of course they do. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I that's got to be a fun claim to fame too. You know, like oh, that's my butt. <laughs> You know, and if there if there was ever a Guinness World Record of whose butt has been seen most often in the world, whose butt has been seen by more people than anyone else's butt? Oh, it probably those, would be out. Those two fine, actors, yeah. those two models, probably come close to holding the record. Up. Yeah, they they got to be up there. You know, yeah. I I don't know who really wins, but they have to be up there. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to contact the Guinness people about that. <laughs> it's a very specific record, and do you want to hold it? Yeah. I'd be thrilled. <laughs> I'd be happy with it. <laughs> well, um, this has been awesome. I don't think that uh, we'll probably have any more big goals. We're just going to kind of roll with whatever we come up with, which is perfectly fine. This is a lot of fun. I'm sure there there are more large songs out there, and we'll just do them. Um, yep. So we'll celebrate our next victories. Basically, we'll celebrate when we reach maybe you know five thousand or ten thousand. If we ever get that far, we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't see any reason to put goals and 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 certain songs. We're just gonna you know hit them as we see them, mm-hmm. and it's uh, based on your votes. Yeah. So keep voting. Let uh, let us know in the comments what you'd like us to do next. There is quite the long list but if you vote for something that's already on there bumps it up the list from from what i'm told from the list master that's that's how it works yes <laughs> if some somebody requested it goes on the list and then as other people requested or suggested then it gets added as votes to that person's original well Simple. thank you so much for watching uh i hope that uh you agreed with every single word that i said because obviously i don't make mistakes but if i yeah. did <laughs> let me know in the comments <laughs> i was gonna 